So there's no way to confirm. They say the storm began on the other side of the world. Perhaps in Fukushima or Israel spread rapidly, wrapping everything everywhere in darkness. A squirrel has died above the ceiling tiles in the hallway outside my office. There are hundreds everywhere, huge black flies. For so long the storm has not abated. I've lost track of the days spent under these black clouds of ash and the heavy rain they bring with them. The streets have become rivers. Only the most courageous and the foolish venture out. From the window in my office, I see the bodies in the streets whenever the fire rains from the sky. Some say it's a sign from some god predicted by ancient prophets, punishment for all the evils of mankind. Others say it's our own fault, abusing the natural order with our science. It all sounds the same to me. All I know is, for more days than I can calculate, I've not left this campus, crawling like a rat through the tunnels to other buildings and back to my office with what food and supplies I can scrounge. There are others too, students and professors and university staff wandering the tunnels. I do my best to avoid them. In their eyes, there's a desperation I believe will become dangerous. Best to play safe. This is, oh, you can do that, I like that. All right, cool, yeah. You can tell better from down there. This is called Leaving America. Moving was never easy, not across town, not to a new city, a faraway state. This was America, a new job for dad, good schools, new friends, mom said. That was our life growing up in 50s America. My world was never father knows best, American graffiti, perfect, too. My world died. Kennedy was killed. King was killed. Bobby was killed. There was the war away in the Eastern world. Not my war. Not mine. Old enough to kill, I felt the draft blowing my way. Something had died deep in my homeland, deep in my heart that would never live after this. Three, I could have stayed, could have signed up. I suppose fought as some did and died, perhaps. I was afraid, not of joining, not of fighting, but of America, what it had become. Four, moving was not easy, not out of America, not to a strange city, to another land, so different, yet so much the same. Not just an immigrant, I was a refugee, a stranger in a strange land, draft dodger to some, coward and traitor, even in Canada. Some called me and others political freedom fighters, conscientious objectors. Americans in Canada unable to ever go home. We only felt very alone. An amnesty was announced. Most of us in Canada didn't trust this amnesty, didn't trust America anymore. Fearing a trap, most of us stayed, put on ill-fitting Canadian identities, became uneasy citizens in our new land. Six. Half a century later, estranged from our home, many of us have died, not from the war, but old age and regret. This betrayal of us and by us remains a cancer in our hearts. Seven. I have no regret that I left America. Only that America made leaving necessary, took from me my home. I cannot forget. Okay, those, those are in the new book, but not in this one. This, this is um, an older book on Edge that won several awards, and this is it in both books. It's called Edge. I've been standing in the cold, falling rain, hearing the pulse of its heart beat down, seeing the dark images in its shadows like the visions of ancient prophets, and I have seen that I stand in the gutter between the edges, between worlds apart, between gay and straight, between rich and poor, between capital and commune, between woman and man, between every possible polarity you can dream. Looking at those edges, not from the other side, but from somewhere between, which is nowhere, and I have disappeared. Don't get me wrong, 
and don't get it twisted. It may after all have been only a dream. It may be I have seen nothing at all and there was nothing at all to see in the rain. Nothing but a magic shadow show played in a box lit by sun and moon against silhouettes of rain around which we phantom figures come and go. The rain falling like knives, slicing the dark to create worlds and wash them away in a flash lit by lightning that wakes me with a start. The words of the prophets echo down the centuries, truth grown tired and worn until the words are only dust choking off the little breath we gasp to survive the uncertain future we've created for ourselves. And in the words we hear echoing somewhere distant, the pulsing of a heartbeat pounding like a hammer and feel that pulse drawing us out toward the edge. I've lived too long, too near the edge, stood too close to where it happens, seeing what I should not have seen and heard it all and hear it still. In living dreams, I cannot escape. There are people living on the edge. It's true. I've seen them there, clinging to the thin line between them and the other side of their reality, have stood behind them as they clung, hopeless noses pressed to some window, to some place they could not enter. And I have stayed in the shadows, knowing they would not see me there. I have seen, I have seen, I, I have seen the best minds of my generation, and they are the same as those seen long ago, and they are not just America. And they are not destroyed after all, nor drag themselves through black streets, but stand waiting arm in arm to hold firm against that rough beast. Its hour come round as it slouches, unrelenting through every street, seeking some holy land and preordained birth. Oh, don't get me wrong and don't get it twisted. Many people strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism. But what does it matter in the end? What does it matter who is hero and who not? But it may after all be only a dream and there was nothing at all to see but the rain through which we come and go like phantoms as the rain falls like knives slicing the dark impulse of winter midnight streetlight rain, creating worlds that wash away in a flash of lightning that wakes us with a start. There are people, cries in the wilderness. There are people, cries in the wilderness. There are people gathered in the streets, flooding the streets of every town and city, cries in the wilderness of gray streets, gathered with pens and with pitchforks, crying for justice all over this land. Men and women standing arm in arm everywhere, warning of danger, crying out of warning, cries in the wilderness. In the room, the people come and go, talking of what they have seen out there. But they don't go out there, and they, and they don't do anything to stop it. In the dark, in the room, the people watch. In the silence, in the room, they listen. And drown awash in flickering images, and drown in the battle sound and fury across the universe and back again. And still falls the rain like helpless tears. He stands in the shadows of the evening rain, the gentle rain that falls for years. Just a little boy standing in the rain, and rain keeps falling like helpless tears. Still falls the rain with a sound like the pulse, the pulse of a heart that is changed to the hammer beat. The rain keeps dropping like helpless tears. The boy disappears. Still I feel the heartbeat beating underneath everything. The pulse of the heart that is changed to the hammer beat. The pulse of the heart that hammers out love. The pulse of the heart that hammers out danger. The pulse of the heart that hammers out a warning. The pulse of the heart that hammers out hatred. While the rain keeps falling like helpless tears. While the best among us lose all conviction. While the worst grow full of passionate intensity and the heartbeat pulses between everything. Don't get me wrong and don't get it twisted. It may after all have been only a dream. It may be I have seen no nothing at all, and there was nothing at all to see in the rain. Nothing but a magic shadow show played in a box lit by the sun and moon against silhouettes of rain around which we phantom figures come and go. The rain falling like knives slicing the dark to create worlds and wash them away in a flash lit by lightning that wakes me with a start. I've lived too long too near the edge, stood too close to where it happens, seen what I should not have seen and heard it all and hear it still. In living dreams I cannot escape the words of the prophets 
echo down the centuries, truth grown tired and worn until the words are only death, choking off the little breath we got to survive the uncertain future we have created for ourselves. And in the words we hear echoing somewhere distant, the pulsing of a heartbeat pounding like a hammer and feel that pulse drawing us out toward the edge. Surely some revelation is at hand, cries in the wilderness between the lines, this is the way the world ends. Cries in the wilderness between the lines, this is the way the world ends. Cries in the wilderness between the lines, this is the way the world ends. As we stand waiting arm in arm to hold firm against that rough beast that's our come round. As it slouches unrelenting through every street, seeking some holy land and preordained birth, and some ancient anarchy is loosed upon the world. But don't distress yourself with dark imaginings. No doubt the universe is unfolding as it should, and the dark you see is only rain falling. Too long living not on the edge like some, too long living in the gutter flows, between the edges where the shadows flow, between the edges unable to see the dark, see the dark that consumes our lives. I'm with you in Rockland, he shouts out loud, cries from the wilderness with conviction. Is anybody out there? Does anybody hear him? Is Rockland just another dream in the dark? His voice an echo of something that is no more? A cry in the wilderness between the lines. I'm with you in Rockland, fades in the distance. His voice disappears. Uh, but don't get me wrong. And don't get it twisted. It may, after all, have been only a dream. It may be that I've seen nothing at all. And there was nothing at all to see in the rain. And I have disappeared. <laughs>